Hey guys, I'm excited to have Daniel back on again. Um, we have had a lot of good reviews and all the comments that we've been seeing on the first video that we did talking about DAX and a lot of the anti-patterns that uh, Daniel has come up with uh, went very well. So I'm really happy to have you back on here today to talk about uh, even more stuff related to DAX and, and essentially how to uh, just how to improve your overall practices. So thanks for joining me again for another uh, episode of this. Yeah, thanks, Reid. Absolutely. Um, yeah, we're continuing. This is episode two. Mm -hmm. uh, the pilot, the pilot went well, as Reid said. <laughs> and uh, today, I'd like to talk about um, selected value. It's a DAX function, and uh, it was introduced in 2017 or so, I believe. Mm, I think Reid was saying it was introduced to help with the what if parameters, uh, yep. because. Uh, that's what's being used when it auto generates um, uh, that measure with the selected value. Um, exactly. Reed, do you remember what we what did we have to use before selected value was introduced? It was a little bit more complicated. So you'd have to um, usually do some type of an if statement. So like if has one value or um, an if error condition, you'd have to to basically wrap it around yourself in some kind of a check to make sure that a unique value is being returned because otherwise you might be hit with an error where it's um, multiple values are being returned when a single value should be selected. So it was possible, but yeah. it you know it's kind of like syntax sugar basically in a way. Like it it is it's a function that's now doing a few steps for you when otherwise previously you used to have to write like a a few different pieces and functions to get the same result. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Mm, so. In case uh, somebody's new to this function, I'm just gonna uh, type what uh, Reed was saying. So select it, value equals, and then, so it's the same as if uh, has one value and maybe um, let's use color as an example, mm -hmm. then uh, what is it? Values, isn't it? Exactly, yep. That returns a distinct uh column from whatever that originally was or in this case because if it has one value it's going to return a single uh just the single value from it if it has a single uh if the has one value check has been passed is true yeah so even though values is a table function that can potentially return more than one value here mm -hmm. we're doing a check by using has one value and that ensures that the values table uh, will only have one row and one column Yep. And um, as you might know, that means it's then going to be implicitly converted into a scalar value. Yep. And that's what makes the measure work. And for this too, you could also do like a min or a max. Uh, and both of those would still return the same thing. Because either way, it's pointing to only a single row from that column, which would all convert back to that scalar value. Yeah, that's right. And um, I forgot when, uh, but now you really can use min and max with strings. Um, yep. A few years ago, or maybe many years ago, you couldn't. Uh, now you can. <laughs> it was it was nice when they added uh, uh, string values to that for sure. And I think yeah, I think you're right. It was about two or three years ago. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, the third um, uh, parameter in if is uh, what happens when there is uh, more than one value. So let's just save it. And um, yeah, that's uh, what we had to write before selected value. So now to write the same thing, you just need to do it like this, selected value, then get rid of this and this and this, and that's it. So this is much, much shorter now, right? Exactly. I think that's much nicer. And with yeah. any of the um, so, uh, if else statements, like selected value or if, um, uh, you can also implicitly like return blank just by closing off the para um, the the parentheses without even providing the else statement um if, if you don't really yes. care about having anything else as well too yeah, yeah, yeah. read this right so yeah if we write it like this then in case we've got more than one color it's going to be blank and yep. in case you're wondering what it was like you know, with uh, if no oh, actually uh, <laughs> since i said that i lost uh, the um, so I'll, yes, I'll, point anyway. this, I'll actually point this out as an annoyance from, from a Power BI update in, in desktop is essentially what, what Daniel is not able to do right now is he can't control Z and go back and actually get the previous code. <laughs> this is kind of a broken, to me, a, a bug. I could use to control Z 30, 40, I could go back through all of my code, but it uh, it stopped doing that um, recently. I've noticed yeah. that the, the back function doesn't really exist right now. So I'm actually now as a developer, if I'm in Power BI desktop, which 
is not often. I'm usually using Tabular Editor, but if I am, I will copy. I have to basically copy and paste my original code over into like a notepad because I can't really go back to it uh, very easily anymore. So um, hopefully they they fix this soon. Yeah, yeah, that would be nice because uh, I kind of miss it as well. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so Reed was saying, if you leave the third parameter in if uh, as like nothing, if you skip it, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, it's going to return uh, blank uh, by default. Uh, so. Okay. All right. Uh, so let's uh, go to the first example that I wanted to show. Let's just uh, zoom in a bit. Uh, so this is a pattern that uh, somewhat surprisingly I encounter from time to time. Um, do you see anything uh, wrong here, Reed? Interestingly, okay, so you're, you're concatenating. So if you if it has a single value, you're doing a selected value of the product and uh, product sales. So I would guess this is almost going into like a title or something. It look it looks yeah. like you you would maybe use a DAX function for a title. So this uh, has one value, and you're using selected value to retrieve that. Uh, so my like what I've actually tested it. Selected value does r uh, run some additional checks that have a bit of a performance cost versus just doing a min, a max, or a, a value. Mm. So that would be one thought I have there. Uh, yeah, that, so that's the first thing that I'm just noticing. Um, what what else might there be hidden in, inside of this? I think that this check um, is a bit extraneous because it's ah. already contained within selected value. OK, so there's, so that's just, what you're meaning. Um, yeah, OK, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So we've just discussed that set selected value is a shorthand for if has one value values. Yep. Mm -hmm. So this code is like, if there's one value, then if there's one value, which has already been checked, you know? So wh why are you doing this? If anything, you might want to use values here, but then yes, that's, yep. uh, yeah, you don't need this. It, see, this product sales thing is repeated here and here, right? So what you might want to do is use the second parameter of selected value, like this. Let me copy this. And get rid of uh, everything else. Since they like both this. end with the same uh, string of the space yeah. product sales, yeah. that first section can return either one of them. Absolutely, yep. Yeah, yeah. So this will give you exactly the same result as before. Notice how I am using all selected here instead of all, just because simply all would be misleading. Because you see, if you've got, say, two values and not all of them selected, still it's more than one. So uh, the second parameter of select the value will be returned whenever you've got more than one value in uh, this column. So that's why you should be careful and uh, state it as all selected and not just all. So, Absolutely, because uh, you want to know. Example. You need to know if you. Uh, you need to be aware if you need to account for certain filter scenarios or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's one thing. Um, now let me go to the next one. And uh, yeah, this is uh, just what we've done uh, just now. So usually, <laughs> yeah, in my files, um, A means uh, what it was like before, and B what it should be like. Now let's go to the next one. What do you think about this one, Reed? Let's see. If has one value, you so you're checking for a single value against state. Yeah, I mean, again, you're repeating the check essentially twice. Um, and then, and for the bottom one, just mention it again, like last date and first date, uh, either one of those conditions of, of returning the beginning or the end of that wouldn't really matter because they both are retrieving from a single row table by the time these checks have passed. But you can consolidate these down into a, a much cleaner and shorter uh, syntax. Um, I am curious, actually, like as far as DAC, DAC Studio goes, if you run this versus a selected value, like the, because they've been doing a lot of auto performance optimization in the back end, where if people are writing, let's say, non optimized code, it automatically knows and kind of removes the unnecessary pieces. So I, I would be very curious to know, like, how, how this actually performs. But either way, it's not written in a way that is considered a best practice. Yeah, yeah that's right. Uh, so uh, this part, the first uh, few lines, it's um, the same as in the previous example. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's uh, extraneous. Uh, we're checking for just one value twice because uh, also inside selected value, we've got has one value, right? 
And then the uh, difference between this example and the previous one is that as the third parameter in if we are using last date, which returns the, um, the, the last data from uh, this column, right? Now, if we think about last date will always return a single date, just yep. one, no matter how many values there are in the date column in the current field or context. Now let's think about it some more. So if there's one value, would last date work? It would, right? Uh, because, well, I guess if it has uh, it one value, return. yeah, because this is the alternative result. So that's the um, the last date is being ran when there is more than one value, and it's fetching from now an array uh, or um, of uh, of dates that's available for it. Yeah. So theoretically, we could change select the value to last date like this. It would still work. But then, what's the point of having a last date <laughs> twice? Exactly. You can just get rid of it like this. Right? And then that's much cleaner. Now there's just one more thing. Maybe it's a personal, you know, pet peeve of mine or something. Last date is a table function. Mm. While it works completely fine here, I would prefer a scalar value just because it's gonna be a measure, right? So last date will give you a table with one column and uh, one row, which usually is used as a calculate filter. Like it, it has a perf two, three, it, and I was saying it, it has a performance cost as well too. I think Marco and Alberto had a great article on this where you need to understand the difference between table and filter functions um, for for dates mm -hmm. and which one you want to use. Because if your goal is to retrieve a scalar function, or a scalar value, why are you using a, a table function versus say um, uh, min or max, which would uh, also fetch the the earliest or latest date but perform faster. Yeah, that's right. And uh, uh, just to let the viewers know, I don't show these examples to read uh, in advance. And um, <laughs> yet he has made the same suggestion as I was going to do. So if we go to example 2B, we'll see max of date. <laughs> that's what Reed suggested. We should just use max instead of this. And what I'll do is, uh, for people tuning in, um, once this gets published, there will be a link to the uh, it was in the last six months or so, I swear, on SQL BI, but they had a great video or article specifically on kind of separating the two functions, table and list for, for date um, for date functions in Power BI. So I'll make sure to, to link you guys to that. It's a good article to read on understanding these because it yeah. it goes a long way in performance optimization and tuning for, for your measures. Um, now, uh, Reed was saying that we need to check for uh, has one value when we're using the uh, values uh, table function because mm -hmm. if there is uh, more than one value in a table and we're trying to return it in a measure then we'll get an error so uh, let me illustrate this and uh, for this let me use um, actually this will do i think um, yeah th this will do let me copy this i'll create a new measure and let's just call it Example one C, and let's do values like this, and let's create a uh, table visual just to show what this measure actually returns. And let me make it a bit bigger. Okay. Now you see for the first um, like column, we've got an actual uh, color column from the product table uh, is the second one. We've got the measure that we've just created and this is uh, the code. If has one value, then values and uh, so on. Now, uh, let me get rid of uh, the total uh, row just so we don't see all selected product sales. And let me get rid of everything other than values here. Yeah, so you see, it still works now because you're, yeah, exactly. The... You put it in and the, uh, just to, to elaborate on that a bit is because you're currently putting it in a, in a table where the granularity is one to one for every, yeah. uh, every row that it's, it's rendering in the, you know, in, in the query has one value already at the, at that level. Yep. Yeah. Now, if I put the total row back on, mm -hmm. there's an error, right? 
table of multiple values was supplied where a single value was expected. Exactly. Just as expected. Except, and th those are those are <laughs> some of the, the dangerous measures is the ones that work sometimes, but then don't work other times in, in certain visuals. Yeah, I was just gonna um, uh, tell uh, about an example. A few years back, I had a line chart, uh, which worked, but then as I converted it to a table, it didn't. And I was like, how? How is this possible? <laughs> but then it took me some time to realize that whichever measure I was using, it didn't work at the total level. <laughs> and it took me actually some time <laughs> to realize this. So like Reed is saying, <laughs> these, measure, these kind of measures are a bit dangerous when they work, sometimes without your understanding why. Well, and then it, you bang your head against the wall figuring it out, like, this works as a bar chart, but I convert it to a waterfall and all of a sudden it's not working. <laughs> like, oh, well, yeah, the waterfall has a total column. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is pretty much all I wanted to cover for uh, selected value, and uh, we'll continue uh, in the next one. Awesome. This is uh, really great, and I think a good overview of the, the use cases and, and history as well on selected values. So thanks for sharing this today. Yeah, thanks. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. Plus, if you have any comments for a future video, go ahead and add that to the comment section down below. Now, if this is your first time to my channel or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. Also, feel free to show your support by becoming a channel member.